Good morning. So today I want to share out of uh, the book of Numbers. I'm going to read uh, from chapter 16, uh, verses 28 through 35. And then kind of set this up. There's a man by the name of Korah who had collected about 250 leaders of the congregation of the Israelites. And um, and by leaders, I think they're all from the house of Levi, which is the tribe that was chosen by God to be the ones to serve him specifically in the tabernacle and, and also um, Aaron is, is the head of that whole whole tribe but Korah <clears throat> um, well Moses also Moses was actually the head of the whole tribe of Levi it was Moses Aaron um, were the two leaders that God had chosen to lead all the Israelites and then Aaron specifically was over the Levites and then each of the other tribes had their own leaders as well. Well, Korah wasn't satisfied with this. And he gathered a bunch of the Levites and questioned Moses and Aaron basically on who are you to appoint yourself leader over us. We're just as good as you are, type of deal. They were refusing to acknowledge that God had chosen Moses and Aaron to lead the Israelites. So they were rebelling against God's word. And at the end of it all, um, God was going to wipe out <clears throat> all the Israelites um, because of Korah and they had two uh, two main co-conspirators in this and that was Dathan and Abiram but Moses had pleaded with God asking would you really destroy the whole congregation because of one man's sin basically being Korah, because he was the archetype of this rebellion. And then, in the end, this is what Moses said to the whole congregation <clears throat> to prove to them that God did indeed choose him and Aaron to lead the Israelites. Okay, so we're going to start here with verse 28. Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these deeds, for this is not my doing. If these men die the death of all men, or if they suffer the fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about an entirely new thing, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up, <clears throat> with all that is theirs, and they descend alive into Sheol, then you will understand that these men have spurned the Lord. As he finished speaking all these words, the ground that has under the ground that was under them split open, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men who belonged to Korah with their possessions. <clears throat> so they all, so they and all that belonged to them went down alive to Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. All Israel who were around them fled to their outcry, for they said, The earth may swallow us up. Fire also came forth from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men who were offering the incense. <coughs> 
So, the significance of this is that God does not take rebellion um, half-heartedly. Um, Moses basically came up with the punishment and God to prove that Moses was his chosen one did exactly what Moses said. It's not saying that Mo Moses didn't tell God what to do. So don't get that confused. Moses simply stated that, you know, if these men die, like all men die or suffer the fate of all men, then God didn't send them. But if he came up with something new because uh because I mean basically you're you're it's basically talking about a sinkhole here if you think about it. So <clears throat> but I mean in my interpretation is, is it's a sinkhole. But Nobody has ever been swallowed up by the earth before. Basically is what's going on. So Moses had to think of an extraordinary way for these men to die and, and, and pay the consequences for their sin. <coughs> now, bear in mind, God may have, God more likely Put the idea in Moses' head, or or definitely may have told Moses to tell them this, and it just doesn't say that God told him to tell Moses this. But irregardless, as soon as Moses said how these men will die, it happened. I mean, the moment he stopped. So one, God's going to do what he says. Two, God. Just showed to all of the congregation that Moses is the guy that I chose to lead you. You know, and basically, if you if you rebel against him, you rebel against me. So, so, so think about this. This is this is just this is just my understanding here, but. Korah, to me, kind of, kind of is a, a as a symbol of, of of what happened to Lucifer. <clears throat> you know, Lucifer was the highest ranking angel at one time to God, <clears throat> but Lucifer wasn't happy with serving God. Lucifer wanted to run creation and be God and be served by all. As a result of Lucifer's sin against God, God cast him out of heaven and down to earth. Korah. Now, he's not... The number two guy, because that's Aaron. But Korah is a leader within the Levite community, within the Israelite community, within the Levite tribe. <clears throat> is not satisfied with God's choice of Moses and Aaron leading the group. He wants to lead the group, and he had two co-conspirators who wanted to overthrow Moses and Aaron and run the Israelites. What did God do? God cast Korah and all and all of his family down into the earth to show to you know and swallowed them up with the earth. Something that's never been seen before. Um <clears throat> And then for those who uh, was following Korah, well, they were instructed. All of them were instructed to bring their essence and burn their essence and off and you know 
offer us unto the Lord at the Tate of Meeting. So all of those followers of Korah did that. Well, God destroyed them with fire. So, and this is, and Moses is just a mere man. Could you imagine what God's going to do to those who don't believe in the Son of Jesus Christ, in, in His Son, Jesus Christ? You know, and this also tells me that sin, sin has very dire consequences. One sin from one person can, can, destroy a whole generation a whole family a whole tribe I'll even go as far as to say a whole nation if it's not checked so anyway that's all I got for you today uh, be blessed and may God keep you safe and uh, we'll see you tomorrow bye